Myla is uh, called to order again. We're back from recess. And uh, what I would like to do, uh, since uh, uh, the chairman has still has uh, the afternoon session, uh, we've put, our legal counsels have already put together some of the resolutions that uh, we want to, uh, to be endorsed by this body. So we're, the pages are, are going to give you copies to just take a few minutes to review and, and see whether uh, we are in the, in the right track and we try to put your names. Uh, those of you who've made uh, those recommendations or resolutions uh, to, you know, give special attention uh, to those as well. Senator Espicio. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and colleagues. It, the feedback we got from um, our legal counsels and uh, staff is that it looks like we could be clear on the first uh, five items, but the six, seven, and eight items need uh, uh, some more um, some more consensus. So the first uh, point was establish protocol regarding animal quarantine regulations regarding cattle diseases. Number two, listing of what CNMI can prospectively provide produce wise and what is being provided now. Three, petition USDA food service to increase limits to 100 pounds from 50 pounds. <clears throat> and then review of customs regulations on flights from CNMI to facilitate more free trade. And then right after this, there was additional um, uh, follow-up discussions uh, which we need to uh, clear, clear with you all. Number five, listing of available pesticides to educate farmers on what is and what is not permitted. Can, um, can we be more specific about what, for what purposes? Um, thank you, Chairman. It's basically the listing of prohibited pesticide. That, uh, this way we can ensure uh, that our farmers uh, uh, will not use the, the list that are not allowed um, with what the, the, the Director of uh, Agriculture has advised us is there's some uh, produce that um, he didn't uh, uh, elaborate more, but uh, that tested positive on a certain type of pesticide. That's, that's uh, what I wanted to clarify. Okay, so <coughs> Senator Agan. <coughs> if I can also add, and, and I don't know if this is gonna uh, be an additional requirement, but Mr. Chairman, in this particular case, what we require now in Guam is that any pesticide that is being utilized, that they be identified, they be within an authorized list of pesticides that are utilized, but then there's certification requirements for our farmers. That is an additional requirement that the legislature uh, a few years ago had imposed, so I don't know if that, that also may be information that can be disseminated to our CNMI counterparts so that they, they acknowledge that in order for produce to be sold in our local retail stores, already there are requirements not only uh, that certain pesticides not be utilized, but that certification from these respective farmers be provided, otherwise <coughs> their produce will not be marketed in that market. So, uh, and the intent here is to make sure that we're able to allow your produce and your livestock to come to Guam, but then to also aggressively market it. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I think that that would be good information to share. And just for history, um, you know, our, our farmers are, uh, most of them of are, are of foreign descent, I mean, uh, immigrants. So um, what they're normally practice may not be allowed uh, here in Guam. And also in the cinema, I know we, we have some issues in the past with uh, illegally uh, importing certain types. So when um, farmers, you know, uh, in, in the future, hopefully they, they form that uh, co-op in the cinema. That way we can, you know, when we, we do supply Guam uh, with our produce, at least we are in line with what is allowed here in, the, in, in Guam. Uh, Senator Tamanya. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. I totally agree with uh, Senator Frank Ogun in terms of the certification and certificate of application on these pesticides. That, that was mainly what my content of discussion when I brought this up about the certification of uh, 
pesticides and using for this uh, agricultural <coughs> produce in terms of vegetables as is required here in the Guam markets. Thank you. So and the CNMI is not in the process or is not in training for certification. So with this kind of uh, legislation or policy, it will carry on to the requirement of what it takes to, to supply Guam's market. Thank you. Okay. You guys got that? Okay. Senator Cruz, uh, Speaker Cruz, right? Uh, thank you, Mr. No. Chairman. I'm, I'm just wondering uh, whether a quarantine has a, a, a instrument that yeah. can detect whether or not uh, pesticides have been used, uh, a permitted pesticide been used on the uh, produce, because I, I'm also concerned of the safety of the people. Because if you're just relying on on farmers that they don't use um, uh, <coughs> unpermitted uh, pesticides just to make sure that when we pass resolution, we're in good hand that we we the produce has been sold to consumers and it's, it's a safe produce. I'm just concerned on that part. Senator Agan. That's an excellent question, uh, Senator Cruz. And, and just so that everyone understands, in terms of being able to market in, in some of our retail stores, and this time right now is, is absolutely correct, you need to provide certification that, in fact, you have undergone an extensive training with regards to pesticide use as well as herbicide use. And, and what it is, it's, 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 it's a certification that says that we practice safety, we ensure that in fact it doesn't affect the actual produce or the fruits and that, that they're properly cleansed. So that is the additional requirement that was imposed in Guam because what we were having is, is what was alluded to a little earlier where we have farmers who are not originally from Guam tilling the soil here and then taking those produce directly to market. And there was, I believe, one or two incidents w that had occurred uh, where in fact it was brought into question and that's where the legislature in its wisdom had set up those additional certification requirements and agriculture was the, was the entity that was responsible for putting it together and providing the appropriate training and EPA. So uh, in that case, they would, let's say for example, a farmer in CNMI who would like to sell some of his produce in Guam's retail markets would have to provide that certification and then it would be an agency to agency assurance that that farmer is properly trained in the use of pesticides and herbicides. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Chair. Just to clarify something regarding uh, uh, Chairman Yumo's uh, request, I believe uh, by understanding the discussion, uh, the, the objective of uh, Chairman Yumo's request is to minimize um, uh, uh, time wasted on the, in the operation of these um, uh, pesticides no issue when it comes to no importing and exporting where law enforcement does not need to delay time when they find illegal no imports and in the advance of those requests whatever is listed the farmers knows what is the do's and don'ts so in that way it alleviates the enforcement operation, the people um, just delay at the airport and all those things. So it, it's across the board just to minimize delays. Thank you. Okay. Um, pre Mr. President. You know, just, just uh, mentioning about the certification of pesticide, I don't think CNMI has one. And that's perhaps something that we at the legislature should look at uh, the, your, uh, the laws that you passed and the requirements that needs to, to, uh, to for us to follow um, if uh, having someone be certified and where to get them certified and so forth. So that would be uh, one of ours uh, to do. What I guess uh, Congressman Yumo has uh, something to say about that. Uh, yes, uh, Press. Um, actually, CINEMA has a, uh, a, uh, a pesticide program or certification and I believe uh, it's uh, it's out of uh, University of Guam. I think Mr. Kitugua, I believe, you sh comes down. But uh, my understanding, it's it, they only do a commercial pest. Uh, I haven't heard of any for agriculture. That's something that we might have to bring up now. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, we've we've encountered. Uh, I believe it was Chinese growers that were importing certain type of pesticides illegally. 
and, and that's the type of education we need to put in place uh, or law. Um, I, I know we have one with the current regulation, but to go back and answer your question, uh, the CNMI does have, but I believe it's only for commercial applicators only. Uh, I don't remember any of uh, for uh, growers or farmers. But I guess uh, what I was also alluding to is that make sure that the requirements that we have coincide with the requirements that the Guam has in order for us to, to open that market. Because even if we have different regulation and it doesn't comply to your regulation, it doesn't fit. So. Also, if I may, I may add, Mr. President, uh, one of the things that, that additional certification and training uh, created was an assurance it provided the people of Guam, the, co the consumers, uh, that additional assurance. And there was a slight peak immediately after the certification process and they were starting to sell, resell local produce and vegetables, there was a slight peak in terms of the consumers purchasing local products. So, so I mean, it, it does have, it's an added layer in terms of the requirement, but it also provides that assurance to both communities, Guam and CNMI, whether in fact uh, these, these produce and these vegetables are properly reviewed, I guess. And, and, then, and you're right, uh, Senator, and that's where, that's where I was uh, saying that once also the people of Guam realizes and understand that the certification of Saipan is, is by the standard of Guam. And so it's not just the standard of Saipan, but the standard of Guam, where that's, that's why it's already available in the market, because it meets the Guam standard. Okay. So, so we're in agreement with uh, number five. Does anyone want to volunteer to wrap that up? <laughs> Congressman? Thank you, Chairman, and, and I, I, I guess if there's, the, yeah. if there's no objection from uh, Representative Yumo, I believe uh, <clears throat> I just want to offer an amendment to his uh, proposed uh, item number five, and basically maybe just to change the, the the wordings around a little bit and, and just say uh, change the listing of available pesticide to review of pesticide regulation from both the CNMI and Guam to, to ensure that, that we are um, on, on the same level in regards to pesticide, uh, pesticide control uh, both okay. in, in, in accountability and, and protection for the health of, uh, of both communities. Uh, Okay, can you just um, just restate that one more time, and then we can uh, we can. Yeah, basically, it's, it's to, to to offer an amendment to to the proposal offered by Representative Yumo, and, and basically it's to to just reword it, and and say uh, change it instead of listing of available pesticides, to uh, amend it to to read review of avail available or, or review of uh, pesticide regulations, both from the CNMI and Guam uh, to educate farmers on, on what is and what is not permitted. And, and basically, I, I believe uh, that would help us, uh, or Mila, the, the organization, uh, and, and those in char charge with, with uh, enforcing uh, pesticide regulations to, okay. to, to make uh, recommendations to, to, to both jurisdictions in regards to, to coming up okay. with a, a a, an answer that addresses both communities' concerns in regard to health protections. Thank you. Yeah, I think that sums That's up what we were talking about, Senator <coughs> Taimanyo. That's a pretty close uh, statement made by Representative Sablon, but the ultimate discussion that I posted on the floor on this uh, subject is that because of the free free trade that we are, you know, the Guam and the CNMI are are tying together, it is important for the CNMI uh, farmers or producers or exports to get the certification in terms of uh, applying the pesticides that are required in order to to export produce in the Guam's markets. Uh, that's as easy as could be. What are the requirements of applying pesticides and the types of pesticides? For, for both markets, for both Guam and CNMI yeah. markets. Yeah, so Wh whatever is required in Guam yeah. should be extended to the CNMI yeah. so that the CNMI producers or farmers will be certified or will get those uh, informations and training so that they can enter the Guam's market without being rejected. 
because it's useless to bring produce to Guam and then they say, oh, because the, the application of your pesticides are not you know, in full compliance, therefore we're not buying your produce. So that is what they're really uh, sharing to us because Guam's yeah. producers have undergone trainings, education to be certified. Thank you. Okay, I think you made an excellent suggestion to build upon the, the, yeah, the amendment. And so are we in consensus? We, we would have another opportunity uh, tomorrow to vote on the final list of communiques and, and you have some time tonight to, to refine this uh, even further. But there's um, there's consensus with uh, the, the, what we've been talking about so far, and councils have that. On item six, I think it's a uh, it's an offshoot of uh, item one. And from what I was, from my understanding, Speaker DeLeon Guerrero was requesting that uh, absent this uh, protocol regarding animal quarantine regulations, this should be for cattle and other uh, livestock. Uh, the speaker was requesting that the agriculture director uh, look into the possibility of waiving the, the customs and quarantine ins inspection until the former protocols are established. Speaker? Can we, can we clarify that, um, Chairman? It's <clears throat> to remove that custom and quarantine inspection and for it to read to waive the requirement for testing of bovine anaplasmosis for live cattle import in their animal quarantine <coughs> regulations, blah, 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 until formal protocols are established. Okay, just make sure that the staff have that uh, language, yeah, that. but that kind of sums it up, right? <laughs> okay. So, Chairman? Ta the tanonaplasmosis. Uh, Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah, Senator Adams. On that uh, item number six, maybe we could add language in there uh, to waive that inspection or the uh, testing requirements for up to a period of, um, I don't know, say 180 days, and at least then it it, it gives everybody a deadline to um, to do the necessary um, protocols. Okay, okay, so that that'll force, um, yeah, these agencies to and for us to take action. Uh, Okay, so you guys got that, right? For 180 days, yeah. Up to 180 days. And then on number seven, the established reasonable charges relating to customs and quarantine for items coming from the CNMI. Um, Congressman Sablan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess this was for after our inspections, but if, um, I think item four would take care of that. Or, yeah. Yeah, so I, on item four, uh, what Customs and Quarantine is gonna be asked to do is to, is to think of how they can um, augment their operations to do uh, cargo inspections beyond what they're already providing. And so if they do that, then there wouldn't be any overtime fees or anything like that. Is item seven still um, necessary or is that covered in item four? Yeah, so, yeah, so merge item seven into item four somehow. Okay. and. Uh, not strike it, but you want to incorporate it into item four. Yeah. Okay, and then Mr. on- Chairman. Uh, Senator Adam. Yes, on that, um, it's a, um, we, we want them to review, but we don't really say what kind of, I mean, they're gonna review it. Okay, we reviewed it. Yeah, I thought I, I read here, review of cargo inspection uh, in cargo inspection operations with customs and quarantine for f four flights coming in from the CNMI. But the intent is to, to facilitate more detail. Yeah. 
So maybe it'd be to review and, um, and develop um, an inspection protocol that would facilitate what I'm saying is that right now it's it's we're just telling him review it. Yeah. But it doesn't say what's the result of that review that we want. Um, Senator Timon. Okay, uh, my question on this because this sentence is very broad. Uh, it says establish reasonable charges relating to customs and quarantine for items coming to Guam from the CNMI. There is an established fee already of a cargo clearing. Clearing the cargo is $5. So I believe the, the intention of this sentence is to clarify the charges of overtime. If I, you know, if I can say that those items coming for clearance of their overtime, we have to establish uh, a rate so I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to guess it like this because clearing, clearing cargoes or items on cargoes is pretty much established as a $5 or $15. There is a fee there, established fee. And uh, I was trying to, to look at this as what kind of charges are we trying to, for reasonable charges, are we going to decrease it or increase it? It's the one where the, you were charged for the lieutenant. Okay, so that is a uh, that is an overtime. That is an overtime charge. Yes. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, that is an over uh, an overtime charge because uh, we are uh, import agents here. So when we look into this, you know, every time a pro uh, the produce is clear, it depends on the rank of the of the officer. And then I asked them why yesterday we were charged like $17 an hour. Now we're going to be charged like 20 some an hour. How come there's no uh, uh, establishment of rate here? And the answer that I was given, it depends on the clearing officer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, Basically, I, I guess the, the uh, suggestion behind this is, is we, we are looking at, at, at reviewing regulations on, on how we can lift restrictions. But I, I think uh, just as important is, is, is the, as the, the cost associated with, with trying to, to <coughs> ship goods from the CNMI to, to Guam and, and, and maybe vice versa. Um, and, and basically, again, um, when, when you charge uh, according to the, for the services provided based on the hourly rate of the, the inspector providing the service, <clears throat> you, you, can, you can get a, a, a large variation between how much a passenger may or would have to, to pay. And, and maybe a looking at, at, at what the, the extremes are, uh, and maybe a, a compromise can, can be arrived at, at looking at what would be reasonable in between. And, and, and that's basically the, the, the idea between, behind the suggestion is that, you know, I, when someone's bringing in over a couple of sacks from water, for example, of, of sweet potatoes and having them, finding themselves having to pay for overtime charges for, for someone who's in the higher uh, pay scale, <clears throat> obviously uh, it's, it's, it's more like it's costing more, making it unreasonable to, to do this. But, but if we look at the extremes and, and, and come with a, a, a medium compromise, a, a, that's, that's, that's the idea. Uh, what it's going to be, I, I believe it, it will be determined upon review of, of what are, like again, the, the extremes. So, that's, that's the idea, and, and I don't know whether that's, that would be specific enough by leaving it out and just going with item number four. I, or I, Congressman, can we try this based on uh, Senator Adda's um, um, input? So he says, for four, review and develop an inspection protocol that would promote more free trade between CNMI and Guam. Then a new sentence, this includes regulations and inspection charges. 
then we'll just leave it to those guys to, uh, yeah, we, yeah, okay. You guys got it? Okay. Okay, guys, thanks. Uh, number eight, this is Senator Uggins' um, um, concern here, and uh, he makes a good point in that there should be reciprocity, and if there's some opportunity to waive any uh, import taxes on Guam, there should be the same for CNMI. Is that correct? Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think that that really should be uh, rephrased, and if I can present a rephrasing of that, it should re review and present information on existing financial structures for import slash export. And that would be reflective of taxes and fees. In our case, it's a GRT, it's a user's tax, and also it's al also encompassing of the customs and user's fee. So that's why if we take a look at all of that, and if realistically we're looking at a free economic zone, then there will be no customs user fee. That would have to be absorbed in a different fashion within the, the Customs and Quarantine Agency. And also, some of these taxes may, will not be assessed, but obviously, that's where the agreement has to be, whether we legislated it from this point to, to CNMI and CNMI likewise, or whether it's an executive initiative. If we're going with the free economic zone, then we have to be, to a great extent, all encompassing so that we do promote uh, free economic opportunities for our businesses mutually. So, Mr. Chairman, if I can suggest the rephrasing of that, to read, review and present information on existing financial structures for import slash export, i.e. taxes slash fees. Okay, you guys got that? And Just produce that, yes, uh, get that in writing. But Thank is you, there Mr. a Chairman. consensus with that uh, proposal? Okay. Okay, uh, we have just two more uh, items on the agenda and we can go very quickly. Uh, the first, uh, the uh, uh, other thing that we didn't address is on inner island air travel. If we could just uh, get an update on the CNMI's plans for a $15 per person travel promotion fee. Can anybody speak to this? <laughs> Which was supposed to have been implemented in 2012 and if this will have an effect on inner island travel. Was, no? Yeah. Is there a motion that we just table that uh, item? Because I, yeah, so there's consensus. On uh, coordinated tourism strategies, um, you know, there there's a lot of work with the Guam CNMI visa waiver for Russia and China. And it's that's a good example of our regional cooperation to bring tourists um, into our region. In this uh, area, what we're looking for is uh, having uh, an agreement uh, that, uh, Gua, that the CNMI and Guam have some consensus in pursuing regional branding strategies. And so that we, when we talk about, just as we talk about the military buildup, it's not a military buildup for Guam, but it's a buildup for the region. When we petitioned the federal government to support uh, the visa waiver programs for Russia and China, we talk about how we can get them over to our region and it's not just for Guam to come to Guam, or it's not just to come uh, to the CNMI, and so that we we put um, some uh, impetus on our our Guam our visitors bureaus to have some kind of joint um, uh, presentations or make sure that our branding is the same when it when it comes to reaching out to these particular markets. And I think there's never really been any competition with the kind of tourists we're trying to get for our region. And Mr. Speaker, we know that we talk about that in APIL too, that it's how do we bring tourists over to our region and so when they come here, they might want to have a uh, vacation to one of the other um, islands, Sinamara, if they go to Saipan, they want to come over to uh, Guam. Uh, Chair, if I Congressman may. Uh, I believe with respect to uh, 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 GVB and MVA, we, we both, I, I believe both agencies respect the, the competitiveness for, for example, uh, uh, the Japanese, uh, Korean uh, market, but uh, because they have a, it's a basically a package, they come for three to five days, and I think it goes both ways for, for, for Guam, 
But uh, something that needs to be looked at is actually the, the Russian market because they do sp uh, spend uh, anywhere from three, two to three weeks. So if we can have that, um, you know, an agreement, basically, if they do come to Saipan first, we can promote, you know, extending the service to Guam and vice versa. And I think we can do that with this one market because they do s stay for about three weeks, sometimes a month, uh, with regards to the Chinese, uh, Korean, and, and Japanese. It's, it's more of a, you know, three day, four day week. Yeah it's very difficult for them to jump across uh, to our islands or vice versa. But I believe uh, the Russian market we, w uh, would be more of an opportunity uh, to, to extend um, the travel down to Saipan, Tinian, Rota, uh, and even vice versa back to Guam. Thank you. Congressman Yumo, you want to put that in the form of uh, a communique? Just uh, something to the effect that, that uh, yeah, that in pursuit of a Guam CNMI visa waiver, that we have, that we pursue regional branding strategies. Right. Yeah. Uh, For I, I, the I, Russian I'm market. Yeah, especially yeah. the Russian market because, they, like I yeah. said, they do s s have a, or well, stay longer in the region, so. Uh, and I believe uh, GVB and Guam would be meeting uh, uh, next month to discuss this uh, issue. I'm not too sure exactly what date, but that's the information I got from Saipan. Okay, so is there uh, consensus sure with that, that and you can look at the language for that? Um, Rory, that yeah. can I suggest that we table discussions on, on the tourism issues, uh, with the exception of the cruise line? Okay. Uh, until maybe our next meeting when we can bring in our our tourism folks to give us a briefing we we may be talking out of our uh, okay, i can so understand the the comments by representative yumo there there is that uh, even if we wanted it this then in the 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 competition is is um you know i don't know how we get around that I, Maybe we can ask our visitors, folks, to recommend ways in which we can have some kind of uh, regional promotion, or um, you know, or we can look at other things like um, I know there was funding uh, for promoting the United States. What do they call that? America First or something? Um, Visit uh, USA. Dot. Something there was supposed to be uh, funding that would be available to everyone, including us. I, I don't know if that funding was ever made available, and, and maybe we can look at if we can tap into that as as U.S. jurisdictions um, uh, find out. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, if I yeah. may, um, I, I believe that was the step grant uh, state trade <laughs> and export pro export promotions. Uh, the step grant. It was a grant that uh, I believe Sinemai and Guam both have at one point uh, was granted grants, but because of the language in the, the law, it was, uh, uh, I guess, revoked from the Sinemai, just because uh, it didn't it mention uh, that the Sinemai be involved. But I believe uh, GBB uh, uh, got about 100 Fifty thousand, yeah, hundred thirty thousand mm -hmm. to promote tourism or, or that type of deal. So it's a well, it's a three-year grant, and I believe last this year or last year was the last year. So we we lost out on that one. I guess what I could do, Madam Chair, if I may, as Oversight Chair of Tourism for Guam, is give a brief update. Tomorrow morning, I thought the presentation was going to be that inclusive of the cruise industry. So I'd be willing to give a, a synopsis early in the morning just on that. that okay so also uh, Madam chair i was also going to make a motion just to coordinate tourism strategy for cnmi and guam relative to regional branding yes <laughs> and there has been collaboration as recent as our initial trips together okay. so yeah so let's would that be a motion then for us to so move. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the president's proposed that for this particular agenda item, so we don't um, table it and send any mixed messages, that we adopt the language coordinate tourism strategies for CNMI and Guam relative to regional branding. 
it just shows one Mariana's cooperation and okay madam uh, madam speaker and mr. president um, senator uh, yes I just would like to recognize also in the chamber is one of the MBA board from Rhoda mr. Vincent Calvo perhaps before we go on he you know let us just give him something to this share in uh, that uh, in just a brief sharing in terms of the or did you mm -hmm. want to make him wait for tomorrow so that oh, he can okay. coordinate okay. with uh, Senator Barnes? He's coming. Okay, no yeah. problem. Okay. Thank you. So, Madam uh, Speaker and Mr. President and uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to uh, report um, upon the conclusion of uh, these uh, five items on the agenda and that the staff and legal counsels will be developing our communique. So this concludes our, our session. One more item. Okay, Mr. Speaker. I, I don't know if you touched on the inter-island air travel. Yeah, we did, and we moved to table it. <laughs> this is not a tourism issue. It's, it's, uh, um, it was included in my transmission of okay, the okay. issues. So to, we'll, yeah, we'll, to so we'll recognize you, and maybe you might offer some, uh, some so motion to pursue for us. Yeah. For us to pursue. Go ahead, Mr. Speaker. May, maybe just put it on the floor for everyone to discuss. Yeah, um, and, and this was um, something that came out of a resolution from AMIM. Um, the mayor of Tinian raised this issue with us to bring forth, uh, and that is. Um, to discuss the possibility of um, commuter terminals between Guam and the CNMI. Right now, we go through the main, have to go through the main terminal, go through TSA, um, and vice versa. Um, according to our Tinian mayor, um, the FAA regulations um, exempt the need for TSA screening for uh, flights, smaller planes. So I guess for those smaller, and I don't know what the threshold is, how many seaters, so we will check on it. But um, if it is the case that, let's say, some of the smaller planes that bring our passengers to and from Guam and the CNMI uh, could be exempted from TSA and having Commuter, commuter terminals would, um, through commuter terminals uh, that. I, I, huh? I don't want to. Um, oh, you guys are having yes. a say. Uh, and and I, I, I don't want to diminish the, the discussion because I think it's really very important. Uh, what, what we would do and uh, is not, it's a table for today, okay. but definitely would be the, uh, to bring it up first thing uh, tomorrow because I'm making an adjustment in our agenda that we will have breakfast at 8 to 9, and then we'll start at 9 to 10 on this uh, subject because this is something that's important. I don't want it to be discussed only in five minutes, and then we won't get that. No problem. That. So why do we do that? And of course, I know we, we did say that we were going to, to vote this afternoon, and some of our members will, are having to <coughs> leave for other appointments. But I, I also like to, if I may, I want to introduce two members who have joined us, uh, Senator uh, Dennis uh, Rodriguez, in the far, almost to the far end, uh, who chairs the Committee on Health, and he uh, will be presenting uh, with his uh, uh, with this committee uh, tomorrow afternoon, and the other senator who joined us is number four, and that end is Senator Brant McCready. Oh, and Mike, oh, I thought you were with us earlier, Mike, or oh, with lunch only, but Senator Mike Sinicholas. <laughs> Mike Alimtiaco. Thank you. Yes. And, and can I just also just recognize that Senator Taimanyo as a chair for fiscal affairs in the Senate? Senator Cruz as the environment, uh, government investigation and agencies, and Senator Pete Regis is the chairman for uh, utility and telecommunication. Thank you. And education, Senator Taimanyo. So, uh, Myla then will be recess um, as of now, and we will reconvene tomorrow morning at 9. Breakfast at 8. Thank you, everyone.